when we moved to the farm in 1945, it had been somewhat of a mixed farm, like a lot of uh, farms around. My grandfather had uh, cattle, which were no longer there. Cattle used to graze on what is now Park Commission land. Um, and we still had a couple of horses, which we used uh, on the farm, and an old Alice Chalmers tractor. But um, the farming uh, when we went under my father was somewhat more specialized than my grandfather's farming. Uh, because we didn't have any anything for sale that uh, like chickens or eggs or uh, milk or any of that stuff. Um, but we did have a wide variety of fruit, uh, small fruits, uh, raspberries, uh, strawberries. Um, we grew potatoes one year, and but a lot of uh, f uh, peaches, apples, cherries, grapes, and that sort of thing. And uh, now, if you go out on our farm, the only apple trees that you'll see will be right by the house. They're more or less ornamentals in one pear tree. The rest is all grapes. And that's what's happened to farming in, in our area, really, in the last 30 years, is it's become highly specialized. And farmers, some farmers grow nothing but peaches, some farmers grow nothing but grapes. Yeah, we're, we're in about, we have about half what was my grandfather's farm. And uh, as I said, it's nothing but but grapes. And within the grape industry itself, there was a revolution. And my father was in the 1950s really interested in uh, French hybrids because he thought they would grow well in this area. And when we moved to the farm in 45, for the last few years, uh, or the first few years, excuse me, um, in the late 40s, I don't know exactly when the Cuga stopped, but I can remember specifically taking fruit down to the station that had been picked that day and would go on to Cayuga and would be on the streets for at, at the, the first thing in the morning and uh, on the following day. So you could get uh, tree ripened fruit in Toronto, you know. And uh, so I don't know that's I don't know that that's true today. I don't know uh, uh, so much of the fruit is picked too soon to, to keep. Another thing that's changed is the uh, loss of the canning industry. The peaches that people ate in, you know, f 50 years ago were peaches that were primarily grown for canning. They were picked and they had to be very, very ripe when they went to the canning factory. You took a really ripe peach and you set it on the table for, you know, a half a day or something. You picked it up, there'd be a little flat spot on it. That's how, how soft those peaches were and they had to be handled very, very carefully they were very unforgiving. You had to be picked right up uh, and you would pick an orchard three or four times. And um, they weren't the highly colored peaches that we have now. So it was e easier to tell when they were ripe because green and yellow are the keys. You can have all kinds of red on it and still not be ripe. And uh, so, um, yeah, that's one of the other things that, that's changed the, the, the expectations or the experiences of the consumer. The peaches were much, were just a little bit greener when they were shipped by the basket, but they were still ripe by comparison with today. But I can remember sitting in the truck, I would be maybe 16 or 17, with a load of, uh, of peaches. And I don't think I was really aware at the time of where I fit in, but when I look back on it, I always, for some reason, think of the grapes of Ross. <laughs> it just, just was such a depressed and depressing experience to be, you know, because when you got, the canning factories would want, what they wanted was a good supply of peaches. So they would over contract. And then they'd have to find some reason to turn you back, you know. And I don't think there's a farmer in the, in the world that didn't have that experience. The same with tomatoes. I think uh, what is now the Pillar and Post was a, was a canning factory to start with. And uh, my uncle apparently, story goes, that he delivered a, a truckload of tomatoes and they wouldn't take them, so he dumped them in their yard. <laughs> Another way of burning your bridges, I um, But uh, yeah, it was it was just it's, um, it was a marginal uh, existence really in the fifties. Agriculture it was this was not a a happy time for to be farming in the fifties. It was things were pretty poor, and then when. Uh, the farms began to get larger and specialize and become more mechanized, then they were able to compete a lot better. And I guess, I guess some farmers have had some good years in the peach industry. Um, 
the best years for the farmer in grape growing are gone. I mean, when I think of, we get the same, the farmer, the great farmers that are growing French hybrid grapes now are getting exactly the same nominal, in nominal terms, as we got in the 70s. Yeah, in fact, we got more. Uh, we got 600 and some dollars plus for a ton of French hybrids, and I don't think they're getting more than 500 now.